So I thought I'd start with a little bit of an explanation about why we've been looking at this. So, I mean, everybody's asked questions. It's, it's part and parcel of running the service and those questions need to be managed and answered. And the time and effort should be focused on answering the questions, not managing the system and the process. And a lot of people do this in different ways. So you might have a dedicated email address. You might have opened up Twitter or Facebook. And while that's very easy for people to submit questions, it can sometimes be difficult for the library to organize those and keep on top of. And one way around that is to have a sort of large dedicated help system where you can allocate tickets, but sometimes that's overkill and it can be a bit inflexible, sometimes expensive. And another option is live chat. And I'm sure we've all been on those. They're really good, really easy to use, but there's the expectation of being always on and immediate responses, and that has an impact on staff time. So there, there isn't really a mid-ground for someone who needs something lightweight and simple and more importantly, effective to, to manage the queries and the support. Um, so this is, this is the first version of this, the first time we're shown it to anyone. Some elements are placeholders and a few cosmetic tweaks needed here and there, as you can see with this screen. So we've just put this in for the demo. So the idea is you would, you would link to this from um, a little button or a link on your LMS or on your library homepage, wherever you want to put that, and the person will be prompted to log in. So what we didn't want to do from the outset is to require people to sign up for yet another login and password, another one to remember, another account. So on the patron side, what we have, we've, we've got this example of login with Google. That could just as easily be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and any of these social services, we can, we can log in there. The option we've got underneath, SAML, that is um, that's a, basically a single sign-on system. So that would cover things like Shibboleth, um, Active Directory, LDAP, those sorts of corporate single sign-on systems. So it's, it's quite flexible about how you can log in. And of course, you might have someone who their first question is, how do we join the library? So they, they wouldn't have any of these logins, but chances are they will have lo uh, login for Google or Twitter or something like that. So they will be able to log in and the account is created. So what I'll do first of all is I will log in with Google. So I'm logging in now as a customer, as, as a patron. So the first thing that you get is a, a screen for a new query, because that's most likely the thing you want, want to be able to do. The exception to that would be um, when a member of library staff replies, the patron will get an email and there'll be a link in that, and that link will take them directly to the reply. So you can see here in one of these queries, you've got the little number one at the side there. So there's, there's one in red message there. So if um, I clicked on the link from the email, it would have taken me straight into these library opening hours. Um, so if if I go into this one, I'd be able to see the conversation there. This this is the question that was asked and you can see Andrew's replied there. Um, as people, as different people reply and get involved in the conversation, their little icons are placed at the top here so you can see who's been um, involved in the conversation and it's, it's as simple as reply and, and it's all real time. So I can send her a, a message back there. It pops to the top and it puts me as the active user on that because I was the last person to reply. And it'll tell me how long ago that reply was. You can also see that there's a typo in that. Um, that's a deliberate typo. If I move over any of these, I get this little icon at the side there. If I move over it, I get the option of deleting that message or I can also edit it. So if I edit that, it just puts it down into the bottom. I mean, I can correct the type or put that back in and it will tell me that that's been edited. Um, if you have a lot of queries in this sidebar, there is a little search there. So for instance, if I knew that I'd asked a question about the city library, I can type in city and it will pull out all of the queries to do with city and I can go into those. Um, as far as submitting new queries, um, there's a little plus button here where I can start a new query. And I'm logged in here, as you can see, as J.R. Hartley. Can anyone shout up and ask me and tell me what J.R. Hartley's going to ask? I'm sure you're all going to fly fishing. remember. Fly fishing. Yeah, of course, it's fly fishing. <laughs> so we will start our message there. Uh, you got. 
contact. So what that will do, it will post that off. It will put that to the top of the list and um, we've, we've got the others under there. Um, that will then send a, an email. There'll be a, an email alert that goes off to the library to let them know that there's been a new query and there'll be a link in there that will take them straight into the query. And it's not limited to, to just that one question. You can sort of follow that up. So if I remember correctly, I think you did say it's rather old. Um, the other thing we can do, if I move my list of people out of the way, we've got this attachment button at the bottom as well. So if I click that, it will take me as normal into there. And as you can see, I, I've actually tracked down fly fishing by GR Hartley. Um, so I can open that and that will upload it. And any member of library staff can go in there, click the download button. Um, I can also put something like this is the cover. And that's all gone off to the library. So one thing we didn't want to do is give the impression that this is a live chat. So you do get this. Thank you for your message. We'll reply as soon as possible. So there isn't that uh, expectation that there is someone at the other end who's going to reply straight away. Um, and that's it for the staff, for the public side. Um, what you've seen so far should be very familiar and that's deliberate. And the reason is because we expect people to instantly know how to use it. So there's no help needed and no barriers to anyone asking a question. But if that's all it was, then you could just easily use something like Facebook. But I think where this really shines is in the library side, in how you manage things, how you manage queries, keep on top of everything. So managing the support doesn't become a burden. So if I now log in as a member of staff, going through the SAML option. And I will get the staff view, which is very similar, but with additional columns. Um, so when when you first log in, again, if you've followed a link from an email, it will take you straight into the query that you've been alerted about. But when you first log in, you'll you'll get this view. So we can see we've got <coughs> our unread messages there because we've got the flags at the side. Um, the first stage really um, in managing any of this is, is the folders. Um, if I go back and just sort of deselect this one, I can show you how this works. So if I pick up the, the fly fishing query, I can say something like, um, something like that, that will send it back. And if I go back in here, you can see immediately in, in real time, we've got the reply in there and we can, and an email will have gone off to GR Hartley who can then log in and, uh, and claim his copy of the yellow pages. Um, so th these folders at the side, again, these should be familiar from, uh, from sort of email systems, things like that. So. The first thing you would want to see if you just log in in afresh and you haven't followed a link from an email is anything that's unread. So you know straight away that these are things that need to be to be dealt with. Um, so you can get those underway. All queries is everything that has um, had some sort of action in it and doesn't have any unread messages. So it's every message in the system apart from things that are unread. <coughs> Escalated. Um, if we move over this here, I'll just read that one so you can see. When you move over this, we've got the little exclamation mark, which is escalated. And you could see these as a status, really. Um, so this has been marked as escalated, so it's moved into the escalated queue over here. Um, you can remove that flag, and that will pop it back into all queries. You can mark it as complete or you can delete something. If you delete something, it goes into the bin, but it's never actually deleted. So you always have copies of everything that's been submitted. The bin is like an archive. Um, so if we mark this as complete, now you can see that's grayed out and it moves into the complete section, moves out of escalated, and we can quite easily just sort of move that between the two there. Just a, a very simple way of setting the status on different things. 
So that's the first level of, of organizing your messages. The second one is labels. Again, this should seem very familiar. If I go back into our queries, um, the good thing about labels is they're completely customizable. You can use them however you want to use them, but they work in conjunction with folders. So if I want to see everything that's flagged as follow up, I can click on that. So that's showing me all queries that are marked as follow up. If I wanted to go into escalated and find everything that's got a follow up label, I can use the two in conjunction and it'll further filter the list. Um, if you want to add your own, you simply go into edit mode and you can type in a title there. We'll flag this one with red just to make a distinction between them and then just click done and you've added that new label at the bottom there. Um, as far as sort of marking things up, if I remove that follow up flag and go back into all the queries, when you apply a label to something, you can see here this one's got the follow up um, label there, and you can add quite a few of them that collapse down, and you can just hover over those and see what's being added there. If you want to filter them as you're working through the list, you can just click on one of these, and that will apply the filter down here. Um, so that's another way of filtering things. You can also add new filters by moving over this little tag here. You can add and remove them just by clicking everything that's in the list there. So if I remove that one, the, the third way you can um, <coughs> manage these is with keyword search. So if I want say for instance, city again, I can do that and it will pull out everything with the keyword city. But they, they all work in conjunction. I think that's that's the powerful thing about it. So if I mark a couple of these as escalated. So if I wanted everything that's been escalated, that was for follow up. Oh, I should have marked another one actually, but I could put a keyword in there. So if, if there was more than one, I could type the word library and it would apply that filter as well. Um, so it's it, it's very very easy to be able to drill down through different things so if you did have the archive in the bin and you want to find individual things in the bin you can go to the bin filter it by one or more labels and you can also filter it by keyword at the same time so it's very easy to manage things um, the other nice thing we can do with it is if we go into all queries <coughs> and we want to um, say for instance um, apply a tag to more than one item if we look for everything with the word library in it it will filter that list down and then we can apply bold action so we can select all of those we can delete them or we can apply our library tag that we've just created so when we remove that filter if we want to come back into this and um, find everything that's been marked as library. It's just as easy as clicking on that button and it will filter that list down. And then of course you've got um, the keyword search on top of that. So if we want to pull that down even further, we could type in open and, and it will find individual messages. Um, and because you can manage these labels yourself, we've, we've set some of these up here with former for Andrew. So say for instance, We've got um, our JR Hartley query, the fly fishing one. If I want to allocate this for Andrew, um, it's as simple as going over the tag. I can flag that for Andrew. And then when Andrew next comes in and logs in, what he can do is click that and he's basically got a to-do list. So he, he knows exactly what he needs to be doing there. He could just as easily go into the tag list and take that off and pass it back to me. So when I come in, I've got my to-do list as well. Um, it may be that these queries are all to do with interlibrary loans, so I could flag that and I could allocate those to a department. It's, it's flexible enough that you can use these labels for everything and then use them in conjunction with the folders and the keyword search to, to really get on top of managing the queries and know the status of each one at each point. And you've always got those email alerts to fall back on, so if you need to go back into something, you've got a deep link straight into anything that's got a new um, reply to it. So that's that's everything, that's, that's the system. Um, we're very conscious that we want to keep this as simple and as lightweight as possible. We, it's, it's for a very specific 
um, for ve it's a very specific tool for doing a very specific job, but we do realize that there is a gap that isn't being filled and that's what this is intended to fill.